Welcome to Washington Post Live. I'm David Ignatius, a columnist for The Post. It's a special pleasure for me this morning to introduce our guest, Philippe Etienne, France's ambassador to the United States and a diplomat that I've known for many years. Uh, we're going to talk this morning about the crisis in Ukraine, French-American relations, and the future of Europe. Ambassador Etienne is coming to us this morning from the State Department where he will be representing France and the European Union at 9.30, uh, a half hour from now, at a meeting of the U.S.-EU Energy Council. I'm grateful to his staff and to the State Department for organizing the logistics for his appearance uh, from State this morning. We've promised to end our conversation at 9.25, so Ambassador Etienne can get to that uh, meeting. Uh, Monsieur l'Ambassadeur, bonjour. Uh, Welcome to Washington Post Live. Thank you. Bonjour, uh, David. Thank you. Thank you really for your invitation. I join you also in your thanks to the Department of State for having me this morning in this building. Indeed, I will represent not France, but the French presidency of the Council of the European Union at this very important meeting of the EU-US Energy Council at 9.30. Thank you for also your adaptation to this uh, schedule. Thank you, David. So let's begin, uh, Mr. Ambassador, uh, with the Ukraine crisis. At this hour in Moscow, your president, Emmanuel Macron, is meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin for urgent talks to see if there's a diplomatic path forward that can resolve this crisis without a Russian invasion of Ukraine. Give us a sense uh, of President Macron's agenda as he goes into these uh, crucial talks today uh, and what the nature of his conversations has been in recent weeks with President Putin. Thank you. Well, first, he is not only visiting Moscow, he is also visiting Kiev, and um, this is uh, really important to uh, underline. And this visit has been uh, prepared by many um, conversations with uh, the two presidents of uh, Russia and Ukraine. Uh, President Macron has been uh, knowing them and for, for many years now. And uh, also by a very intense coordination with uh, other leaders since the unity between allies here is absolutely essential. Two conversation with uh, President Biden and many conversations with other leaders, including the Prime Minister, the British Prime Minister, the Secretary General of NATO, Baltic leaders. Our Foreign Minister was in Romania recently, and you you mentioned uh, in your introduction what we're uh, ready to do also with Romania. So a lot of coordination to uh, preserve the unity, uh, which is absolutely essential. And then the topics uh, which will be discussed in not only in Moscow, but also in Kiev. You know, France and Germany are mediators in the Donbass crisis and uh, members of the so-called Normandy format together with Ukraine and Russia. And we we see a possibility here, maybe, maybe to to move forward uh, based on a a first uh, meeting of the advisors, which took place in Paris two weeks ago. Of course, a a path for de-escalation, which uh, we are looking for, and a conversation on uh, security in Europe. These w- would surely be the topics uh, of those uh, visits, like of many conversations in those days, based on our uh, dual approach, which is uh, a deterrence of an invasion and dialogue, uh, especially with Russia. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, uh, President Putin is said to have described your President Macron uh, as a a quality interlocutor is the way this has been translated. It's a phrase that came to the press from a a French official describing their interaction. And this dialogue has been important during the crisis. Some have criticized President Macron for uh, speaking uh, outside of the, the formal NATO process and have worried about divisions within NATO. Uh, How would France uh, answer that concern, which is expressed here in Washington, but in other capitals as well? Well, I I don't really understand these 
these uh, these statements. Uh, on the contrary, as I said, we we act uh, in a, in a very close coordination with our allies and in the unity of our positions. And on top of that, we are not the only ones uh, talking with uh, President Putin. Uh, and finally, we are also very closely in connection with uh, the Ukrainian uh, with Ukraine and the president of Ukraine. So I don't see any um, any base uh, for uh, such uh, such a suspicion. And the fact that, uh, indeed, um, I will not comment President Putin's uh, um, supposed uh, um, assessment about his dialogue and the quality of his dialogue with uh, President Macron, but it is true that they have been uh, uh, meeting uh, for four and a half years now. Uh, uh, same with President Zelensky, by the way. Um, I remember President Zelensky visit to Paris, the first one I was there. And it's rather, I think, um, um, an asset for all of us, and, uh, including for our allied um, nations and partners to have this possibility of a dialogue. It shows also that the Europeans, since France is not only mediator with Germany in the Normandy format, but Minsk agreements implementation process, but also is the president of the Council of the European Union right now. It all shows also that the Europeans stand actively side by side with their allies in uh, this dual approach, which, and everybody agrees with that, uh, has uh, among the two uh, components of this approach, a dialogue to find, uh, to use all diplomatic instruments to find uh, a, a political, diplomatical way out of this crisis. So uh, one sign of the coordination that you were referring to a moment ago with other NATO allies was the phone call yesterday between President Macron and President Biden without asking you to go into the uh, details of that, which I'm sure are confidential. Give us a sense uh, of the conversation that's been taking place between the American and French presidents as they together try to figure out a path forward. Our president, my president, wanted to um, um, discuss with the president of the United States about his visits to Moscow and Kiev just a couple of days after uh, another discussion with President Biden. And uh, they exchange the views, uh, obviously, on their recent uh, contacts and uh, including with, uh, with, with the two countries, which uh, President Macron will now visit, and uh, about the <coughs> um, uh, assessment they have uh, of the situation. And uh, finally, also about the way to, to go forward, especially in this uh, um, research of a uh, a path for de-escalation. I'd be interested to hear your evaluation, Mr. Ambassador, of, of how President Biden and his team at the NSC and the State Department, the Pentagon, have been handling uh, this crisis. How do you think they, they're, they're doing? Well, I think they are doing pretty well, um, uh, including in, in, uh, in the uh, in particular, it is uh, the point I can uh, judge from my my corner, uh, the, in particular in terms of coordination, and uh, we appreciated very much the way uh, we have uh, coordinated our answers to the uh, uh, proposals made by Russia. You know, we had two two answers: one uh, from NATO, one from the United States. There, there was a, a huge number of coordination, not only on the on the issue of uh, how we proceed, but on the on the substance, especially on the basic principles which we defend, uh, and on the prospects of uh, European security arrangements. So uh, a very good coordination and a coordination which which is continuing, which is going on, to uh, not only to affirm but also to to substance to give substance to the the unity between us and our positions, um, because this crisis is evolving every day and uh, it's really important that we can coordinate both aspects of dialogue but also of deterrence uh, and uh, this one is also very important of course. Let me ask you about a, a particular a chilling piece of news that emerged over, over the weekend. Uh, Biden administration officials briefed Congress uh, late last week about 
uh, their intelligence assessments of what might happen uh, if Russia invades, and those uh, estimates were then um, uh, shared with the news media, uh, and I'll just review them for our, for our viewers. Um, U.S. officials said that uh, Kiev could be captured within a matter of days. The death toll of civilians could reach 25 to 50,000 Ukrainian civilians, uh, 5,000 to 15,000 Ukrainian military, and 3,000 to 10,000 Russian uh, troops with as many as 5 million refugees. Obviously, I don't want to ask you for a comment on the specific details of that uh, uh, U.S. Uh, estimate, but, but I'm, I'm interested in what France uh, thinks uh, might be the human cost of this invasion if it does go forward. Yeah, thank you, David, for not asking me to confirm the figures because I have no intelligence. But obviously, uh, we are very much worried also in uh, in, in France, in, in Europe in general. It's it's a crisis of security, by the, by, by, by the way, in Europe, in the heart of Europe. So we European nations are very much worried, like the United States, uh, about the consequences of a, a possible uh, Russian invasion. This is also uh, the reasons why we, we have this very strong deterrence pillar in our attitude. And uh, this is also the reason why France, as you recalled in your introduction, uh, uh, said that we were ready to, to, to participate concretely to the action of reassurance of our NATO allies who are at the, on the eastern part of our alliance, uh, announcing uh, a, a deployment pending a, a NATO decision of uh, uh, troops in, in Romania. Uh, so we know that there, there, there are those different scenarios. No, there, there is a one which would be an outright invasion. There, is, there are other ones we, which would be more hybrid actions. Uh, disinformation, we, we, we know all these possibilities. And uh, we uh, we are all the more active on the diplomatic front and uh, the, the 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 political contacts. Then uh, we are worried by the situation not only around Ukraine, uh, but in particular in Belarus, where we see this uh, really uh, strong accumulation of uh, military force, Russian force. Germany's new Chancellor Schultz told the Washington Post in an interview that we published this morning that Germany's response to a Russian invasion would be, uh, I'm quoting him, united and decisive. But he refused in this interview to say explicitly that the Nord Stream 2 pipeline would be canceled in the event of an invasion. Would, would France um, uh, favor cancellation of Nord Stream 2 if Russia invaded? Well, first, uh, w I mentioned the very um, close coordination we have with our partners. The first of them is Germany, of course, because we are uh, together in this Normandy format, and also because we are very, um, we work closely together on all EU uh, dossiers. <clears throat> and as you, as you can imagine, the visit of our president to Moscow and Kiev has been also very closely coordinated with the German Chancellor. Uh, all the more here, yeah, this uh, the chancellor will is today in Washington, but will also visit uh, uh, Ukraine and Russia later. So this is really important. The security of a uh, uh, gas supply, and the this is also a little your question will be by the way one uh, and the diversification of our suppliers. Uh, this will be one of the topics of the EU U.S. Energy Council, and concerning our answer to uh, our deterrence uh, measures to uh, prevent uh, uh, an invasion. Uh, we are also consulting with the United States very closely. We don't give details on this for obvious reasons. We are considering uh, the different possibilities, but we will we, we are preparing those uh, massive consequences we have already um, um, announced. Uh, because it's it's a it's a important part of our our policy here, and finally uh, we we think in France that indeed the diversification of uh, energy supply of our in particular gas 
is a very important uh, part of our autonomy, of our independence. And um, we, we discuss this uh, very openly inside the EU with Germany and with uh, the other EU nations. Let me go to the heart of what I uh, suspect uh, President Macron is talking about with President Putin at, at this hour, which is the Russian argument that Putin has made uh, now for really many years that the West has gone too far, that it has encroached on Russia's security and that Russia now needs a guarantee that NATO won't go even further and make Ukraine a, a member. He's asked for a specific guarantee of that, which the United States, other NATO countries have said is unacceptable. But I wonder, in your discussions with the Elysee, President Macron's advisors, you see some way to speak to that Russian concern about security without making compromises that would be unacceptable. Is, is there a, a way to calibrate that? Uh, do you and your colleagues think? Well, this discussion is the reason why we wanted to answer seriously with proposals to the uh, Russian proposals, which as such were not, uh, we could not accept, of course. But uh, here, two points. First, the principles of the European security, of the security on, on, the, on the European continent, which have, we have agreed on, including with Russia, um, in Helsinki, in the Paris Charter, but also in other documents which Russia has quoted. These are absolutely essential and we want, want to preserve it. And we have on our side, we, we have uh, kept them. Uh, we are ready to have this discussion, but those principles, you, you cannot select some of them and not keep the others. They, 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 they constitute uh, a a series of principles uh, which which are the base of our um, um, security and and the respect of the sovereignty of of uh, our countries in Europe is one of this uh, principle and which is for us uh, a real real important uh, orientation now and uh, which guides our policy and I mean also of course and in particular the sovereignty of Ukraine. This is one thing. The other thing is the, the question of the instruments uh, for uh, ensuring security in Europe. And there, unfortunately, uh, we have seen an unraveling of those instruments uh, without being too, too technical. We have seen uh, very important treaties like uh, uh, conventional forces uh, in Europe, uh, open sky or uh, intermediary nuclear forces, which basically do not exist anymore. We have important documents, non-treaty, non but very important political guidelines, so-called document, Vienna document, which absolutely need to be adapted. And this is all of this and uh, many other issues like maneuvers and um, 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 information transparency are also the base of the proposals we have made to Russia uh, through the two answers by NATO and the US. And we understand that Russia is preparing its answer to our answer. So indeed, th there is a discussion here and it is not only about the concerns of one part, it's about the concerns of all of us. And as I said, in particular, of we, about the concerns of the European countries, because it's our security. Thank you, that's a, a helpful uh, summary of, of what's likely to be at the center of the discussions taking place uh, this, this morning in Moscow. I'm gonna, in a moment, turn to Fr Fr French-American relations, but ask you first briefly about uh, President Putin's visit to China. Uh, uh, there were the photographs of, of Putin and Xi together, and it was a kind of a opening ceremony for the Olympics all its own. We, we have a, a, a question that's been sent in to us by one of our viewers. Um, a person named Columbus Leo, who's writing us from Canada. Uh, and uh, this viewer says, Russia is threatening to invade Ukraine and China is threatening to invade Taiwan. How would reactions to Russia's threats or even invasion affect China's bullying of its neighbors? It's a good question. Uh, what are France's thoughts about that? Uh, it's a very good question and it's difficult to answer the question because uh, to know the answer, you should be a, a little in the head of uh, the leaders uh, 
not only in Russia but also in China. Uh, probably China is uh, is looking very carefully at what is uh, happening now, but uh, I guess uh, the situations are different. Although the, some of the principles uh, uh, I mentioned about the European security apply also worldwide, and uh, this is also very important for us to to remember. Let's let's do turn to to French American relations. Uh, they went through a, a rough patch. Um, uh, uh, after the so-called AUKUS deal um, with Australia, where the United States and Australia apparently didn't inform France of the cancellation of a submarine deal that France had with Australia. Uh, there, there was some uh, difficult days. But uh, from what I know, the Biden administration has been working hard to try to repair relations with uh, France. Um, and I want to ask you, Mr. Ambassador, how, how, how that's going? How well is, is the Biden administration doing in, in making uh, France understand that it, it um, uh, regrets the difficulty and wants a, a strong alliance with France? Well, thank you for mentioning these difficult days because they were in particular difficult for for the French ambassador back in September. But we have been working a lot, uh, the two countries, France and the United States since then, to rebuild the, the trust, as we said. And uh, there was a very important meeting in Rome uh, when they were there for the G20 summit between President Biden and President Macron. And they adopted um, a declaration uh, in Rome, which is really, uh, really important because it uh, first it gives a, a roadmap for a very substantial work on many bilateral and multilateral issues where France and the US uh, want to cooperate. Um, and one of these issues is the Indo-Pacific, which was uh, the start of the, the, the problem uh, and uh, where we recognize and we have on the US side a strong recognition of the of the, the the importance of the not only French but European uh, policies in the Indo-Pacific, one one other issue is really important, which is the recognition of that, um, also by the United States, that a stronger and more capable European defense can contribute positively, not only to general but also to transatlantic security and in complementarity with with NATO, and on this we have built a number of, uh, of uh, discussions and conversations. Uh, including uh, in the framework of the French presidency of the Council of the European Union and of the preparation of the NATO summit uh, next June. So, uh, in, in a nutshell, uh, uh, not only uh, an improvement of the relation and a common will to, to rebuild the trust, which uh, uh, had been lost uh, during this episode, but also a very substantial cooperation on very, very important issues, including the fight against uh, the terrorist threat uh, in Africa and in other places, because in spite of all dangers to the international security we have been discussing until now, we don't forget uh, also that uh, the terrorist threat is also uh, still a threat. We don't forget the other big uh, international security non-proliferation issues which are there. So Ambassador, we have just a minute left before you've got to get to your meeting uh, on energy issues. And I want to just ask you if you'd briefly say to us how you hope uh, this meeting other and other discussions can contribute to greater energy security for Europe so that Europe is less uh, vulnerable to uh, pressure from Russia, perhaps from others, uh, on energy. How can you make progress on that? Well, energy is one domain where we think that a, a more, a stronger, a more sovereign Europe is uh, is good for the United States and for our common security. And and right now, energy is really uh, an essential dimension because of this uh, worries about uh, gas supply. So uh, this meeting uh, will be really important to. To, to show here, too, also in this strategic domain of energy and energy supply, that there is a unity, a transatlantic unity, in the way we can cooperate to uh, secure uh, the supply of gas, uh, in, in particular in Europe, and to continue to, to secure it. But it, this meeting will be also on another very important topic, which is the clean, the, the, energy, the energy and climate transition, and I would add a fair transition. 
uh, which is now clearly the choice not only in the European Union, which has been all, always a leadership in the implementation of the Paris Climate Agreement, but also with this administration on the US. So this will be the second very big uh, topic at the agenda of the EU-US Energy Council, which is really an important convergence. So with that, uh, I, I want to thank um, uh, Ambassador Etienne for uh, uh, an excellent discussion. Uh, you have a, a meeting to attend. We're grateful to you for taking time uh, to be with us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Levy. Thank you for having me today. Thank you. So um, we'll conclude our, our program there this morning. Um, uh, to check out what we have coming uh, ahead, uh, please go to WashingtonPostLive.com to see uh, our, our agenda uh, and also to register for those programs. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, and we'll look forward to seeing you on Washington Post Live uh, later this week.